Hey guys, I wanted to make this video about the worst investment in 2019 because uh, this is unlike most of my videos and actually researched and it is something where I would bet. So this is the worst investment. If there was a vehicle where I could short that investment, i.e. bet against it, for instance, if the investment goes down a dollar, I would gain a dollar, I would put a uncomfortably large sum of money against this bet. So what is the investment? Um, I have to tell you a little story for you to understand. So MTGO, Magic the Gathering Online, is not doing well. Uh, part of this is MTG Arena. Part of this is Wizards of the Coast themselves. They have recently announced something which has, quote, inspired confidence in, quote, the MTGO finance community. So the MTGO is run by finance bots. Just like what they tried to do with the secondary market of the physical magic cards, they tried to have monopolies. The best example of this would be Star City Games buying every single uh, Zendikar fetch land for 10 to $15 and then putting them on sale for $100 later. This is another very good example, but except it's easier to do this online when in real life you have to buy from 200 different vendors and shipping and all of this, cancellations of course, also happen when a card spikes in price. So what can we conclude from MTGO? What would be the worst investment on this platform? If I give you a guess, it was four years ago. Four years ago, something called Vintage Masters happened and people were super excited, as I will embarrassingly admit, I was as well, because Vintage Masters had Power 9. Now, if you miss your opportunity to, the, to buy physical Power 9, you could buy digital Power 9. And this attracted a lot of big whales to go in and either open packs or buy these Black Lotuses. A Black Lotus as a card has historically never gone, I mean, it has only gone up in price. And I don't see that discontinuing given the limited amount. But in the Magic the Gathering Online, there was this hype. I remember a lot of MTG Finance, especially people in the online sector, were promoting Black Lotus as the second coming and as you can see, the foil Black Lotus from Vintage Masters, again, only a digital card, was uh, 600 tickets or 600 tickets at the time. Currently, it is 67 and it is not trending up. Let me repeat that again. At one time, this was over 600. It was 666 and 70 tickets. Now it has dropped 90%. 90%. Now, this is, of course, is the foil one. I'm going to make another prediction that it's going to drop probably another 50% at the end of 2019, as will all the P9 on Magic Online. Uh, the reason being, it's very simple. You buy cards, you play with a card. This is the best example I have of a f ecosystem, if you will. I, I guess that's the right term, an ecosystem where the cards are only as valuable as if people want to play against you. If you have no one to play against, and all you did was hoard this, Mr. Robot, then you have screwed yourself. Because without people playing it, there's actually no reason to have this card. There's none to have this card. Now, this is the promo version, the limited. This is an alpha version, which is kept pretty steady. However, I mean, it is relatively new. Uh, the Vintage Masters Edition is probably the more common of the two and as well as something where the price will go down uh, a lot. And it will be interesting to see. It will be fascinating to see something that was 666 tickets go down to 67. And from 67, I'm going to predict it will be under 40 tickets, possibly under 30 tickets. And there is absolutely no, no salvation for this type of card. 
Yeah, so I did want to compare the two. So I'm not betting on this one because I think this is a promo edition. I'm betting on the more commonly open Vintage Masters. Uh, and that would that's actually a very good look as to all of the P9. Uh, if Black Lotus goes down, you can be you can bet that the other Power 8 will also go down uh, as well as the dual lands and all that stuff. Magic Online, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but it always gets very bad feedback uh, because people play Magic Online, they are invested into it, uh, they spent time and they have a lot of money into it. So it's not good to tell people that, hey, your investment sucks, you should get out. Uh, they have this sunken cost, right? They've already put so much time, so much money into it, they can't see that it, the boat is going down. So for them, they will go down with the boat. And that is, I, that's sad, but it's also human nature. Uh, it is very understandable that these people will go down with the boat. And these people will continue to say that nothing is wrong with Magic Online and MTG Arena is not a competitor. Just like when Magic said, Magic Online said that Hearthstone is not a competitor. We all know this is not true. And we all know that the stronger MTG Arena gets, the weaker Magic Online will be because the less players it will have. Imagine if you're a Magic Pro. So assuming that Magic Online is for pros and grinders. Magic Pro can make more money streaming, as can be shown from Brian Kibler, Hearthstone, so theoretically, they could stream Magic on uh, Magic Arena, make a bunch more money, and not worry about Magic Online at all. Magic Online is very antiquated. I'm not just talking about the look or the feel. The concept of it is antiquated because it doesn't stream well. No one can read the card. No one knows what's going on. You're not going to get new subscribers. You're not going to get people interested in Magic because they don't know what's going on. I mean, how often do you run into any of these Power 9 in real life? Like, a new player is never going to be able to open a pack of... Uh, actually, no player can open a pack of Vintage Masters on Magic Online because it doesn't exist. So when someone watches a stream, they want to mimic it, they want to immediately duplicate it, and they can't. They can't. So MTG Arena, smaller card pool, which many of you say is a disadvantage, but at this point, I think it is an advantage when you're introducing people uh, to a game. They don't need to know the history of Magic's all of Magic cards. They can just focus on what's new. And it's easy. Like I was on, I was watching a streamer on Twitch, and you can actually click the little button, and it'll tell you what the card does. So they play the card and the little button appears and you can click on it and it'll tell you what the card does. Magic Online does not have that function. So the only people who are still on Magic Online besides robots and MTG Finance people are the Magic Pros because they say it's more serious. But eventually the pro is going to realize they can make more money streaming Magic Arena than playing Magic Online. And that will change everything everything how fun would it be for you as a new player to get randomly paired with a john finkel or a lsv that's fun right that's amazing that never happens on magic online because you as a casual player would just be destroyed <laughs> you have no chance to win right i mean you just have no everyone's play, playing the tier one meta deck and if you choose not to play the tier one meta deck well you're not going to win, and that's very unfortunate. So, MTG Arena is the future. I will eventually play it. I know I have mentioned that I was not going to play. I've I've, I've really held all, out as long as I could, but I'm big into mobile games. I spent a lot of money on my other two mobile games, Fate, Grand Order, and Fire Emblem. So, it's only a matter of time. The only reason that I don't currently play it is it's not available on iOS, Mac, and all I own are Macs. But um, either they will put it on the Mac platform and then I'll play it or I'll buy a gaming PC because I need to get one of those anyway. Um, I have a lot of new video games I want to play. And that's that. But the worst investment that you can make in 2019 is Black Lotus, Magic Online, Vintage Masters. There is no worse investment 
in the history, I think in the history of magic right at this point in time than that. Because A, it's a digital, it's on a platform that is dying. B, it's already lost 90%. Let me repeat this again. It's already lost 90% of its value. So yeah, I mean, things can go up and things can go down. Things can get reprinted and things can, but even when something gets reprinted, it doesn't lose 90% of its value, right? Typically, Lily is what, down to 50 bucks now, but so eventually go back up to 70. I have no doubts about that. And then they'll reprint again and it'll go down to like 40. But for something that you cannot physically hold, for something that has really no utility other than showing to it to someone, uh, to the very few people who still play Magic the Gathering online. So the Magic the Gathering online community really d did criticize me heavily back then when I said they were going, their platform was going to die. This was when I heard of uh, Magic Digital Next. I didn't even know what Magical Digital Next was. Uh, Magic Arena was not announced and it wasn't in beta or anything like that. But I knew that Magic Online could not compete against Hearthstone. I don't know about MTG Arena versus Hearthstone. And at the end of the day, uh, the future of Magic is looking bright, but it's looking bright in MTG Arena. I have watched these streamers, I have done my homework, and the way that they have made it is it's easier to understand for a new player. So from the perspective of a new player, Magic Online is a terrible platform. It is a very expensive platform where you have to spend thousands of dollars just to make a tier one deck that you will hate playing. MTG Arena, uh, I saw streamers play dinosaurs and vampires and all these like things that I, I consider tier two or tier 2.5. And they have fun. I mean, that's the whole point. If you watch someone having fun playing it, when is the last time you watch someone playing Magic Online actually having fun? Like smiling and there was no crash, the MTGO did not crash on them, or there was not a bug, or someone was not exploiting a bug, or someone was not ranting and being really angry in the chat. It's terrible. Um, it's a terrible system. It always was bad. I always thought the Magic Online was bad. But the worst investment that you could possibly make is uh, Black Lotus. <laughs> Bye, guys.